Let's now begin with a discussion about what is mindfulness and what is meditation. The word mindfulness is a term that gets bandied about a lot lately. Really, mindfulness mainly means being present in the present moment. Often our minds are chattering, talking about past events or future events. But if we think about mindfulness as just allowing your mind to pay attention to a present moment, that really is probably its best definition. If you think about something you're doing such as brushing your teeth or showering, you may have noticed that your mind isn't always present. It's wandering to what you might be doing in an hour or two. It may also be reminding you or talking to you about something that happened in the past. So to be mindful means to pay attention to what's happening right here, right now. And as you can imagine, there are multiple moments for those every day in your life. You can think about, again, just routine tasks like sweeping the floor or brushing your teeth, having a shower. An opportunity there to pay attention to present moment. Meditation, then, is just setting aside or dedicating time for yourself to focus on some kind of practice. So you can have a mindful, paying attention to present moment, meditation, where you set aside a time for it. So think about meditation as almost like dedicating time to an exercise practice. So if you go to the gym every day at 5 o'clock in the evening, a meditation practice might be something you put in at, say, 6 o'clock in the evening. So we can have mindfulness anywhere, anytime, and meditation is something, again, that you take time to do. When you're ready, click to the next slide. There are many different types of meditation. We've just talked about one of them, a mindful meditation, where you're going to be focusing on something that's happening to you at the present moment. Generally, when we speak about a mindful meditation, we usually ask somebody to pay attention to their breathing. By focusing on breathing, this is something that's happening to you at a present moment. But there are many other types of meditation, some of them with Buddhist origins or Hindu origins. This, of course, is where meditation essentially comes from. Vipassana meditation is to see things as they really are, a Buddhist type of meditation, focusing on your sensations of breathing. So not just breathing as an act, but actually feeling the breath as it comes in as, and the breath as it leaves the body. Zen meditation is a little bit different, a Japanese style of Buddhist meditation where the eyes are held open and posture is very much a strict part of the practice. There are other forms of meditation such as primordial sound or transcendental meditation or kundalini meditation which require specific training for these types of meditation. When you're ready, advance to the next slide. There are many myths about meditation. A lot of people are a bit apprehensive about getting into a meditation practice. Some of the reasons that people are apprehensive is that they believe it's for people who are much more spiritual. In fact, many people even think that it's a religious practice. A lot of other myths of meditation is that people believe it's supposed, you're supposed to have some kind of a transcendental experience which uh, does not often happen, but it could. Uh, other reasons that people might be apprehensive or a myth of meditation is that they believe that your mind should be completely silent. And as I'll mention many times throughout the next 30 days, know that your mind will always chatter. Having a quiet mind or a completely silent mind, you'll have moments of that, but your mind will always chatter. So if you hold that as a goal to have a completely silent mind, it's an unattainable goal. That, of course, doesn't mean that the meditation is diminished in any way. We have very successful meditations, even through working around the chattering mind. When you're ready, advance to the next slide. Okay, we're starting now to get into the reasons why you might want to meditate. You know, it's, of course, in the news all the time. Everyone's talking about their meditation practice or the mindfulness practice. You can see here I've listed a few reasons why you may want to consider it. Look at all these physical benefits, decreasing your blood pressure, your resting heart rate. It will even reduce blood sugar levels. There, of course, are big changes in mental health as well with improvements in things like anxiety, improvements in things such as depression or bipolar disease even reductions in feelings of stress, stress, improving a body image, 
even helping with things like eating disorders as um, an, another big example of how mindfulness can be so helpful in our lives. When you're ready, move to the next slide. We can see here that there is a picture of the brain and deep within the brain there are two parts that are focused on this slide. One is the amygdala and then there's that long tail and it's known as the hippocampus. In the hippocampus, it's a fascinating part of the brain which is responsible for taking short-term memories and converting it to long-term memories, but also some feelings of well-being as well as emotional memory. The amygdala is this part of our brain responsible for rage and aggression. Interestingly enough, eight weeks of meditation has been shown to shrink the amygdala, so decreasing those feelings of rage and aggression and expanding or growing the hippocampus just after eight weeks. By growing the hippocampus, people, again, have feelings of improved feelings of well-being, but also improvements in things like short-term memory. When you're ready, move to the next slide. This is a fascinating picture looking at two brains before and after 10 minutes of meditation. One of the most notable changes is the decrease in overall temperature or metabolism of the brain. We can see on the right-hand side there's a cooling effect that happened to the brain. But may not be obvious, but a closer look you'll notice that before the meditation there's also an area of activity on the right side of the brain, on the before, sort of at the front on the right. And then after the meditation, you'll notice that it lights up on the left prefrontal cortex, or on the left-hand side. What's interesting about that is activity on the left prefrontal cortex is associated with feelings, again, of happiness and well-being. And people who are experienced meditators regularly have that part of their brain activated. When you're ready, move to the next slide. As we near the end of this first presentation, we now are going to get to the nuts and bolts of meditation. So this could also be an FAQ section, but we'll call it the how-to. So first of all, sitting. Do you need to sit in a certain way? The only recommendation for sitting is to make sure you're sitting in an upright position, not slouching because we want to feel the full expansion of our breath, as well as it's uh, advised to sit in a symmetrical fashion. So if one hand is up, so is the other hand. Do you need to breathe in a certain way? Generally, it's recommended in and out of the nose, but if that feels unnatural to you, just breathe whatever is natural. As far as cushions, generally something just that keeps you supported in an upright position is the best. I recommend for these 30 days to not have any additional music in the background. For some of the meditations, I'll put some music in. And some people do meditate with incense or statues. That's not necessary, of course, and certainly not recommended to have incense burning if it's not uh, permitted in your area, but uh, that's certainly not necessary. And then, of course, the question about thoughts entering your mind. Again, know that that is normal, and when they come into your mind, just return to focusing on the sensations of your breathing. When you're ready, move to the next slide. We're finally ready to begin our first meditation of the 30-day challenge. On the next slide, there is a video. It's called the One Minute Meditation, and that's what we're going to do today as our first meditation. The video does a nice job of explaining things such as how to sit, how to breathe, what should happen if thoughts enter your mind, and just a really good reminder of, again, how meditation or mindfulness can be taken with you wherever you go. Congratulations on reaching the end of the very first day of the 30-day challenge. Good luck with the physical challenge as well. And I look forward to talking to you tomorrow, back to day two, where we'll learn about the origins of meditation. Of course, we'll have an accompanying meditation with that as well. So click to the next slide and enjoy that presentation. You may need to double-click on the screen to make sure you can view the one-minute meditation.